Munduro Capital is a Vancouver-based company. I'm joined by the company's CEO as well as President Tio Detro. Tio, great to have you here today. Thank you for having us. Well, today is the final day for the 2018 Sprout Natural Resources uh, Conference, but I do want to get a better sense of your company. So could you give us the overview of your company? Absolutely. So um, a good way to describe Mandoro is that we are an exploration company that's really focused on exploring for copper and for gold. Uh, we are focused on Eastern Europe and for, the reason for that is Eastern Europe has um, the western portion of the Tethian belt and the Tethian belt is a very prolific mineral belt uh, globally, uh, kind of runs from Eastern Europe right through down to Southeast Asia. So when um, investors are thinking about, uh, you know, really prolific mineral belts, they normally think about Chile or Peru, South America, or they might think about the Yukon and Alaska. And that's really the North American continent and the South American continent that's collided with the ocean plate and created this, you know, great mountain, mountainous feature along the entire North American coast and South American coast that has produced many deposits. Well, that same type of structure exists in the Tethian belt. And so the western portion is where there's really interesting copper deposits um, that we're focused on exploring. And I understand you have projects in Serbia with exposure to copper and gold, as you mentioned, but how strategic are these projects? Um, strategic in the sense of um, they are focused on copper and gold. Um, so let, let's just kind of think about what we're doing. So we've basically built out a land package around a very well-known mining camp. That mining camp is called uh, the Timok Mining Camp, uh, which is in eastern Serbia. It's kind of like thinking about Sudbury in Ontario. You know, it's a very important old camp in Canada, and there's been a lot of exploration around it. So we've done something very similar in Serbia. So we've built a land package package all around that mining camp. We have 800 square kilometers and that's why it's strategic because it is around known uh, mineralized systems and there's very good infrastructure there, there's very good um, uh, access to labor, electricity, roads. So it's also strategic from the sense that it's much more cost effective to explore there. And we know that exploration and development is very capital intensive as well. So could you tell me a little bit about the capital structure and what sort of expertise you bring to the table? So the capital structure of the company is very simple. Uh, we basically just have common shares. Uh, there's about 62 million outstanding. So the company's actual valuation, because we're trading at around 10 cents, is approximately six to eight million depending on the obviously the the share price so of that we have about 4.7 million in cash so really what you're looking at is about an enterprise value of around 3 million which is really a very uh, what I would say great valuation for investors to consider in terms of getting into an exploration company um, in terms of the capital structure, we haven't grown very much in terms of um, uh, dilution simply because we don't do a lot of financings because a lot of our programs are funded through partnerships. So we really do look at the industry going forward. I mean, historically the industry has very much focused on equity financings for um, funding any type of exploration or obviously development, although a debt component in development is very important. But for exploration, the industry has very much focused on equity financings. The issue that we see is that regardless of the capital markets and the commodity cycle, um, certain assets have um, much better, let's call it affinity for financing through strategic partnerships. And particularly these projects in Serbia, because it is a new, or let's call it a re-emerging belt for copper, there's a lot of interested strategics that are in the region. As we see, for example, right now with Lundin having put in a, um, a bid for Nevsen, uh, obviously the bore assets are being privatized, which is bringing a lot of international companies in that competition, that tendering process. So. Mandura was a company, I think we've been really fortunate that we've always had um, a very good cash position, we have a very low corporate burn rate, and we have, I think, a very good asset base that is attracting partners and allowing us to fund exploration uh, really fundamentally for a discovery that would bring value to our shareholders, but through strategic partnerships. 
And Tio, also when people are looking at companies such as yours, they're looking at the management team to see the strength of expertise and experience. So could you tell me a little bit about what your team brings? So um, our entire team has uh, been focused on the Tethian belt, our technical team. So our strategy is uh, first to ideally hire locally, and we've been very fortunate that Eastern Europe has had some tremendously well-trained geologists. So we do have an exploration manager, one for Serbia and one for Bulgaria. And uh, those gentlemen have been in that region for well over 25 years, working for some of the majors like Rio Tinto, for Newmont, for Anglo-American. So they're very well trained in running large programs and really recognize the type of systems that are in that region and have a very good um, on the ground experience of running those programs. As well, we bring in uh, world leading consultants. We do have um, a relationship with Dick Silito, who has come out to site a number of times to review our projects and work with our teams to really understand the structures that we're looking at, as well as um, you know help with us develop another way of exploring for those uh, types of deposits. And then for myself, the capital market side, really trying to always manage and balance where we get capital from, ensuring that our shareholders understand what we're trying to achieve, working with partners, bringing new partners partners in the company and really making sure that at the end of the day we're all aligned to make a discovery that is going to bring the value to our shareholders. And to you, last but not least, we're here at this conference and people are keeping one eye on natural resources uh, prices, in particular the mm -hmm. precious metals. So of course uh, people are watching to see whether or not we've bottomed in the market or not. But I do want to ask about the value proposition of Munduro for mm -hmm. people who are looking at the risks and weighing the opportunities as well. What would you say to them? Um, it is a very difficult task, I think, for retail investors to really try and understand technical fundamentals. And um, having been an equity research analyst myself and sat across the table from hundreds of exploration companies, it is a very time intensive exercise. So I would suggest that they really try and find either uh, a broker or um, a technical uh, newsletter writer that they really trust understands fundamental technical um, views on assets. And once they've got someone who can help them understand the merit of the projects, then they should really try and spend time to speak to the management teams. If they pick up the phone and call, and if the company doesn't call back, that's an indicator of whether you want to be working with those types of managements. Um, so find someone that can give you good technical advice, reach out to the management teams and try and speak to them directly to try and understand. I mean, if they can't explain to you what they're trying to achieve, then you know that's another way of, of kind of um, going through the process of trying to understand every different type of company. So I would suggest that um, if people are interested in Mandoro, I mean, we're trading at three million uh, enterprise value. That is a tremendously good and valuable opportunity. We have two drill programs that are currently running that are being funded by partners. Uh, you know, we have um, the mandate this year and we're trying very hard to bring in a third partner. We have five million in cash. So I think there's a very compelling argument for investment, but I would encourage um, investors to come out and, and speak with us. Okay, Tio. Well, thank you so much for giving us an overview of your company and thank you for all those investing insights as well. Great. Thank you.